This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back, we're live, it's been too long. Of course, Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end, I'm Pete Corielli, bro, we're doing filming, mics, big show, we're right on track. Let's get into it, man. I, you know, we got. What do you got going on? I know you're already saying you got something you want to start us off with. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, right before this, you sent me a video of your setup, and I got to tell you uh, what you did down there in your basement for uh, for a studio should be applauded. Thank it, you. Uh, it, it, <laughs> Thank you. I, I gotta. T- I gotta tell you, you made. You made something out of nothing down there, and it looks like you're broadcasting from uh, from top of the, uh, the highest building in New York City. <laughs> Thank you, man. I am really proud. It took me a long time to envision it, but about two days of nonstop, no one down here just banging and nailing and uh, putting it together. But I, I finally feel like I got my studio. I'm ready to go. I'm excited to be hanging with you, I'm trying to... Try to take it all very slow today, man. Um, well, good to be here, too. It's been a week. I like when there's a week that goes by because stuff happens in our lives that uh, tend to make good fodder for the cast. And I want to start by saying yeah. for the last uh, week and a half, I've been on what they call intermittent fasting. Uh, to try and lose some weight here because I was tipping the scales at 203 about uh, 11 days ago, and Lana uh, had decided this is enough. Let's go and do this intermittent fasting uh, with this thing they call bulletproof coffee, which had that clarified wow. butter in there and the, and ghee. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want I don't want to bore you Hold about on. the diet. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's funny though how like because I'm the same way. You ever notice like when you start to gain weight, y- until your wife says something, that that's when you know, oh shit, I'm fat. Yeah, because <laughs> the wife will give you a little leeway for three, four pounds here. You get to that fifth pound, right? It's like so when you say was it Lana's idea because she saw you were starting to pack them on a bit. Yeah, you ever you ever catch your wife kind of like when you take your shirt off and like you're talking, yeah. but her eyes are fixated on your belly button. <laughs> yes, man. The minute you start to think to yourself, "I got to do a suck in or anything," you know, you know what's happening. You got to. So, what is this shit you're doing, bro? What are we talking about here now? Intermittent fasting. What it is is you eat between the hours of two p.m. and eight p.m. That's your eating hours. That's like after, uh, the Muslim during Ramadan, like during what they do that, like after, no eating at sundown, right? Yeah, but this is more like you're taking basically 18 hours and not eating, and you're eating within six hours. So you do all your eating within six hours. Now, can you eat whatever you want? No, but they're pretty laxed with you know what you can and cannot have. So I've been doing this for 10 days now. It's been working. I've seen some significant weight loss. Um, uh, It's a little hard to get used to, but um, we're doing it. So this was last Friday. Lana and I decided to go on a hike where we live. If you walk down the street, there's an entrance to a, a hiking trail, which is about four and a half miles long. And nice. it goes down, it goes down, goes up, it goes down. But the last, I'd say, half hour to 40 minutes of walking is straight uphill. Nice. So, That's a nice little backyard exercise you have there all year round. We've been loving it. Um, so we're on the hike. We're, we're going down the hill. And I have a guy um, working on the house doing AV. And he calls and says, uh, hey, man, um, there's a fire uh, nearby here. And I said, well, how how close is it? He goes, I'll take you a photo. So he took a photo, and the fire looked like it kind of was billowing in the neighborhood. So Lana's got a thing called uh, some citizen app where it tells you kind of what's going on 
within a 10 mile radius of your house. So if there's a fire, yeah, if there's yeah. a whatever. So she gets an alert that there's a fire on the cross streets where we live. All right. These fires. Yeah. All right. I immediately call our nanny and tell her to get the kids and put them in our car and drive out of the uh, house and stay in a location where once we get there, we could hop in the car and, and get out of there, right? Uh, now, now, this is separate from the story last week where you were the only one driving and the other comedian and that was at Sep the end of Separate story. What, what, oh, my. What is this? Once a week evacuating? This is like the hurricane evacuations in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Every week with this shit. All right. Now you got to meet up with the kids like Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. <laughs> We're at the bottom of the hill. Right. Okay. You and Lana. It's about one, one o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm, in, I'm going on 17 hours, no food, right? Oh, that's right. We're in the <laughs> middle of Ramadan, too, by the way. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> so, so we start running up the hill. Yeah. Now, I got a bad knee. I got a torn, uh, I got a, you know, a meniscus torn. But uh, when yeah. your kids are in danger, it's fight or flight, bro. Right. Yeah. So I'm running up this hill like Usain Bolt. Right. Right. As I'm running up the hill, <laughs> I start smelling the fire. Oh, now your mind is racing. Would you fucking start flying? <laughs> We're. And now Lana's behind me, right? Right, right. And, and Lana's like, hey, should we ask the UPS driver to see if he could take us up the hill? Now, listen, coronavirus, coronavirus in full full effect, right? Right, right. U UPS, and I don't know if you know, they're on a strict time crunch. The way they deliver packages, yeah. these guys are on like, it's like, it's like they got it down to a science. So yeah. they can't like veer off the path. And be a taxi, right? Wow. I mean, but this is like a free commercial. This is public relations gold, man. UPS cancels a delivery to help evacuate kids. Turns out to be Sebastian Maniscalco. Boom. Are you kidding me? So I got to hear how this plays out. So I go, babe, no, just go, keep going. Just keep going. So I'm running. Right. Now people are running past us going, I don't know if you want to go up there. There's a fire. Holy right? shit. And Lana goes, We live up there. Our kids are up there. So that got me even more. That I'm I'm like, okay, boom, turning on the the the, the. now listen, bro. Yeah. You know, you, you, this is similar to like Runyon Canyon. I don't know if you've ever been there. Many times. Uh, okay. So if you were to run up the steepest part of Runyon Canyon, this is kind of what this is. It's it's this is no walk in the park. And same terrain too, like loose hard dirt and stuff. We're not even there yet. We're on the street. Oh, okay. Up. Oh, all right. Well, is any we cause have... cause passing? Can you get a ride up the hill? No, there's not really many cars. There's there's it's like a residential street. With not a lot of action. By it's the way, where you, was the UPS driver going in the direction you were running? Yeah, his car was facing that way. His truck was facing that way. I, I, but I, I, yeah. I didn't want to risk it with the Corona. I don't know what the hell was, you know, and I'm sure I didn't want to put him in a position. You know, so anyway, I'm just like, right. let's go. So we're going. Now, I'm on the, I pick up the phone and I'm telling my nanny as I'm running. So I'm, I'm taught oh, now, bro, yeah, bro. Yeah. I don't know about you, right. but when you're in the middle of a full fledged workout, could you yeah. talk? No, bro. You, you're on an adrenaline high. That's like rarely even heard of. <laughs> I mean, come on, you're halfway up there. And then people are telling you, don't go that way. There's a fire. Or, you know, your kids are up there. What the fuck, bro? It is pumping. It's pumping. You're talking, running. Shit. <laughs> and I'm on a fast. And oh, right? I keep forgetting the fast. So I'm, I'm, I got to rest. I, I, I do a knee drop. You ever, bro, I had to. I, I was going to pass away. I have never seen Indiana Jones take a knee drop running away from the bad guy. <laughs> I mean, okay. So, all right. So I had, I had to regroup. I, you know, it's just one of those things where you do a sprint. You can't sprint. 
forever. Right. No, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, you got to, otherwise you'll be useless when you get up there. Are you making the phone call while you're on one knee or are you just trying to gulp uh, in some air? I I start the phone call as I as I start back up again, but I'm huffing and puffing. And my my nanny uh, is um, she's from El Salvador and she speaks English, but you know it, it, when you're on the phone and she's with the kids and there's crying and this and that. The other thing I'm trying to give her instructions to go outside and where to go and whatnot. I say keep your phone on you because she has a tendency right. not to have her phone. So I'm trying to explain all this stuff while. I'm running up a mountain. Can now. she can she drive this woman? Does she Yeah, yeah. She okay. could drive, but she's never driven our car before. All right. Well, unless it's okay. a stick shift and she should already be halfway down the hill with the fucking thing. I'm sorry, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm running, I'm running. I reach a point where obviously Lana's 10 years younger than me. Her body is not as compromised as mine. Oh no. And I tell Lana, just go. Go oh. ahead of me. What, what, bro, what, what do you mean, oh? Oh, my God. We're just doing a whole adrenaline speech, and when it's your kids involved, now you're taking a knee and, and telling your wife you got pom-poms on? Going, you got it, Lana. Go, 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 Lana. Holy shit. Bro, I, 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 I looked at this as a, an almost uh, a relay race. Right. Where I, I took us to one point. <laughs> And now you gotta take us the rest of the what way. The point nothing. You act like you fought off a dragon to get to where you guys were. You came out of the gate way too hard. And, I mean, so Bro, my what, <laughs> hold on, I'm my oh shit. Oh, so when when you said when you said to go on ahead of me, like did you take a second knee at that point? <laughs> while while I said it, I was bent over, and, and, I, and I think it was just I didn't even look at it. Just said, "Just go, <laughs> just go." Now she's on the Ramadan diet too, though, right? Yeah, she's right. on Ramadan, all right. But she, she paced it out nice. Yeah, where she had where she had energy. Now, yeah, God. she's she goes ahead of me. I uh, start picking it back up again. She uh, is now out of sight. Oh, I can't even. Jesus. It's <laughs> embarrassing. I fucking. But you, I, I'm sitting here going, holy <laughs> shit. I got to get into shape. Oh, this is ridiculous. For, <laughs> I can't even save my own family. I mean, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot dangle any more motivation in front of you to fucking get up and run than this. By the way, you're getting to the point now where you're so far behind. By the time you get there, they're going to be gone. Then she's got to do that go back in for you, right? I mean, holy well, shit. You're better off just staying out of this shit at this point. Well, well here's what was going through my head as I was going up. Yeah. I'm, you know, it's one of those stories you see on the news where Lana and the kids and the nanny are safe, and then the camera pans back to the flames, and Lana goes, "He, the last I saw him, he just said, go ahead. So, yeah, it was one uh, of those things where I was, I was like, oh, am I going to be the guy uh, uh, who... You know, the, the story is going to be he had a bad knee, he was on a fast, and it yeah. looks like he just couldn't go and got eaten up by the flames. So, yeah, man. A, a, as I'm running up the hill, I see on the ground a half a bottle of Fiji water that Lana had had <laughs> and had dropped <laughs> for me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's like a Sherpa leaving an oxygen tank. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Holy shit. How, how considerate saving her own children and leaving water for her crippled husband. Wow. Oh, man. Oh my God! I, but I, if you could relate to this knee problem I got, and I know it's not as severe as your hip, uh, but yeah. could you imagine trying to run up a hill 
with a hip, a bad hip. Could no, you do it? No, I mean, now I could. I mean, now I could. I got this shit taken care of. I mean, too bad Dr. Ron couldn't rub you out before you <laughs> sent you up the hill. <laughs> But yes, so, I do. I do know what you're saying, man. And you know, you you get that feeling when because I, you know, every every man gets that sometimes. I have my knees sore now too. You ever get that feeling where you're like, it could it could buckle, like just any any okay. step, any step <laughs> could be the fucking one where I'm just down, you know. Oh God! <laughs> Just knowing you're going to be doing your next special in a director's chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had me—I had me buckling on a mountain with a with a with a helicopter. What one of those stretchers coming in? You ever see that? Where, <laughs> where, where they got to lower it into the fucking flames? <laughs> yeah, man. I see the rock was flying one of those in one of them earthquake <laughs> movies, man. Maybe maybe they don't even have enough to bring two guys at once with everything else going on, so they. Just lower you the basket. You gotta roll yourself in while the flames are all around you. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, oh wow, shit! God. So I, I grab the water. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming up the hill. Right where the, where they are. Lana had gotten to where the nanny and the kids were. Got in the car, drove back down the hill to get me. Right. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. My mind you, when this first started, I forgot to tell you this. I called the guy that runs the front gate and I said, "Is there a fire nearby?" He goes, "Yeah, it's down the street. It's gonna hit a lot, a lot more houses before it gets to yours." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, that's guy. Okay. <laughs> this." <laughs> It's this is not like a burglary ring where they're like going down to each house. This is fire. It doesn't it doesn't yeah. wait till the house burns and then starts burning the next right. it, it's not an animal, it doesn't get stuffed, you know. <laughs> well, okay. It ain't to burn two houses before you, now it's taking a nap, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Bro, I mean oh. this is like you live in a world where you like got a roof for an earthquake to put the fire out. Uh, yeah, no, this is so I I get in the car and Lana, Lana right. goes, oh, and, and while I was talking to security guard, yeah. he uh, he go, I go, are people evacuating? He goes, no, not yet. You're okay. Yeah. So, but to me, I could smell the fire, and right. once I got into the neighborhood, I saw I saw like the smoke kind of billowing right near the community. Lana picks me up. She goes, they put it out. It was a two-acre brush fire. It's out. We're good. But I got to tell you, man. Yeah. For 40 minute up. Uh, that was the best workout I've ever had in my entire life. If you want to, if you want to work out, put your kids in danger. Yeah. And you'll be ripped in three weeks. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you would think Lana will be. <laughs> Lana will be. <laughs> now, I got, I got a few questions here. Yeah. Uh, um, first of all, just from a fire standpoint, uh, you're like me, right? When no matter where I am, indoors, outdoors, no matter where I am, if I smell fire, that becomes the fucking priority, right? You, you don't go, hmm. Wonder where that's <laughs> right? And, and go back to what you're doing. You drop all shit, right? So, like, this security guard, what is it? I, you know, I'm, 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 this is the second story. You told me another one off air where I'm starting to, I'm starting to wonder, like, uh, what's going on with these security guards? Like, aren't, isn't, there should be men in towers looking for fires where you live. That's how crazy yeah. that. Now, now, secondly, we, yeah, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Secondly. How far would you say overall from where you and Lana got the news and started running to where the kids ended up being? How far was that total run distance, would you say, about? Mm, I'd say that run was about one, almost two miles. Wow. All right. Up, uphill. All right, because I, I was going to say, if it was a half a mile, 
You should still be keeping up with your wife at a half a mile. But my wife would pro blow me away at that point, too. Yeah, wow, bro. That is why. You know, why didn't you take the, the UPS truck? He would have let you in. There's a fire. He's probably not even wearing the mask. Fuck it. Anyway, yeah. thank in God kids are right. Probably should have asked for a ride. But he could only give me a ride so far and would have to drop me off at a point where cars can't go. And that. That's a big hike. I mean, the, yeah. the UPS would have gave me a little, saved me a little time, but it's not like he was going to drop me off at my front door. Right, right. Wow. What a, what a, so, what a story. Uh, I mean, is this going to be a weekly thing now with the fire? Well, I feel like, I feel like the, the minute you decide to not take it serious... And you and the kids, uh, well, God forbid, but that's the, that's the one time when you, yes, it is going to be what you're going to have to deal with, bottom line, because you, you can never not take that shit serious. What, don't they have like, uh, like if everybody in the neighborhood kicked in like uh, 40, 50 grand, can't we just drop some fucking chemical all around? <laughs> I was thinking, can't, can't the neighborhood just buy a helicopter with water in it, right? And just when this shit happens, we got it. It's just, it's on a helipad in the community and it takes off and it puts the fire out. I'm sorry, when you, you're right. You smell fire. It's one of these yeah. things where you have to locate where it's coming from in order for you to continue on with your day. Uh, I feel like that, that is one of the smells that and gas. You smell gas? Oh, shit. That, that's that's, a, that's shit. another showstopper, that, right? That, that's even scarier. When you smell like gas from like a leaking stove sort of gas? Oh, yeah. oh fuck. That, I, I'm like, we can, we can blow up at any given second. That's just get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> that's what that is right there. I am with you on that oh, one, man. Oh, man. But yeah, no, so, you need to hire, like, you got five guys in towers, you got a helicopter on call. I'm talking the kind of service where if somebody lights a cigar on the shoulder of the road, <laughs> with, within 30 seconds, there's a guy right there with a fire extinguisher asking for his fucking driver's license. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. So, wow. So, that was uh that was last week. Uh I got to tell you this and yeah, you know yeah. I'm not one to kiss and tell but I I got to right. Last night we were invited over um to Alex Rodriguez and J Lo's place for dinner. Okay. Holy shit. Just 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 the four of you. I don't know what's going to happen there. I I was talking to A-Rod and myself have become friendly over the last, I don't know, four or five months. Wow. He's a fan. We did a charity golf event together. Yeah. We've remained, uh, you know, kind of text buddies. I called him on the phone once. Nice, nice guy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we were just kind of texting back and forth he's like man you know, covid kind of bored why don't, why don't why don't we get together this week now i'm like all right maybe uh maybe uh we meet at like a hotel and he goes yeah you know bring bring lana and i go oh, okay man this is this is more maybe a, a, a couple thing yeah no yeah. we had met we had met jlo at a party an Oscar party. Lana and I had met her and, and Rodriguez yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. By the way, thank you for sharing this with us. I know we're not gonna, you know, you don't get deep, and it's you're not you're not the one to kiss and tell. But uh, on behalf of the listeners and myself, hey, thanks for letting us into the world a little bit, man. This is cool. By the no. way, are you uh, buying the Mets, bro? With, with a rod. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, I got. I gotta get my, the the fire situation taken care of over here before I start investing into a baseball <laughs> franchise. Oh, shit, I gotta buy a fire blanket before I hang out at your house overnight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um. So. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I I hope I'm not crossing any confidence boundaries here, but it's it's nothing like it's what I'm about to say is nothing like private yeah. or anything. It's just my kind of take on 
w- this whole experience. I I I have just now found myself in these situations where you know it's it's just very new to me. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's all kind of the perfect word is the surreal man. It, you know, it's like grow up yeah, with my it's, father. It's, you grow up with your father <laughs> watching this guy belt home runs. And now he's asking you how you like your steak. I <laughs> said, <laughs> the fuck, man? Ah, shit, it's crazy. It's awesome. It's crazy, man, but it's awesome. So um, I got to tell you, man. like, I'm very punctual. If you invite me over to your house at 7 o'clock, yeah. I'm going to be there at 7 o'clock. All right, but okay. if you pull up, if you're on my block at 6.55, are you pulling in, or are you going to do a drive around, pull in at 7? It's exactly what we did in this situation. We were 6.58. I mean, I timed this so good. 6.58. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 6.58 with a mile to go. Right. And I go to line, I go, we can't. We can't show up at seven, can we? Uh, I, I thought you goes, just said you're prompt, bro. Go ahead. Bro. Yeah, but in this case, it's like, what were we doing? Going, woohoo, can't we? You know, like, it, it makes it look uh, like we're. Uh, you're, you're already in your head. You're already in your head, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Because this is like a fucking Zoom call coming to life. <laughs> Did you have your bug lighter in the trunk just in case the conversation got boring? <laughs> oh, hold on one second. Let me go get my mosquito zapper. Oh. I have a bit. I have a bit with that. Uh. So what was Lana thinking? Do the drive around or no? Go in. I. She's like pull over. So oh. we do a we do a pull over and we're yeah. just sitting in the car. <laughs> right. And then, and then it turns to seven. Right. And I look at it. I go go now. And she goes, uh, no, 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 okay, hold, hold up, hold up. I go, come on, what are you? <laughs> we show up at 701, 703, what's the difference, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I wish so bad they had cameras running all the way down the road, and they just look and go, look at them pulled over to the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we pull up, I think it was 702, we yeah. ring the the thing and uh they I, I on the other side i wonder if they were going oh god already uh, <laughs> you know like, <laughs> yeah, yeah right you, you ever throw a party and you're hoping people maybe you're running late and you're hoping people show up a little later because it gives you maybe a little time right yeah light the last candle whatever it may be ice up the last beer yeah i like the five minute bubble I, I yeah. really do. 10 minute bubbles, right. nice. 20 minutes, I'm like, where the fuck is this rude asshole? <laughs> yeah, so it, what is the cutoff where it's late? Like, if you show up at 720, is that late? 715? Or I'll throw you another one. When do you tell or call and go, hey, I'm running late? Like, if you're going to be 10 minutes late, is that worth the call? One sec. That's a, uh, no, that's not worth a call for anybody, no matter that, except business, but no, not for a social engagement. I don't think, I don't think 10 minutes, you get to the 11th minute and then you're in call territory. Okay. So we're 702, we pull up. Mm -hmm. Um, we go into the house. We're greeted by uh, seven oh two. You know, it's just really, <laughs> it's really bothering me now. It's like <laughs> fucking bothering me. It's like Jesus Christ, the fuck did you camp out at my gate? Holy shit, the yeah. fuck. I mean, it just, it just seems like a seven oh eight. Just sounds seven ten. I'm friends and family. You could go as late as seven twenty. But A Rod, J Lo, first hang with them. I'm thinking about a seven ten. But seven oh two may as well be a seven, bro. Who are we kidding? I know, I know. Yeah. I, I should have maybe pumped the brakes on on uh, on that whole deal. But right, all right, we're in. Yo, yeah, you are. And uh, <laughs> that is so cool, man. <laughs> Lana and I are sitting down in this like little sitting area and we had, you know, they had some people working there, you know, uh, housekeeper and so there's people there uh, and uh, 
I don't know, it's just five or six people there. It could be staff. I don't know what's going on, but we're talking with them and whatnot. Let's say about, now I'm going to throw this one at you. Yeah. For the host to come down, what's too late? Like, if I invite uh, you at 7 and you're yeah. in my house at 7. Oh, uh, well, I, for A-Rod and J-Lo, 1245. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, seriously, uh, no, maybe, maybe by about a solid seven forty-five, seven forty-five. I'm like, I wonder what what's going on here. But you know, I'm sure well, you like you got a drink. You're you're offered a drink, right? Yeah, I'm offered a drink. We're having some cheese. They got some nice, you know, uh, grapes out, and whatnot. So we're we're picking at that. But, you know, I, I'm meeting so many people, I had to turn a lot. I go, are we at the right house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. <clears throat> it, it, here's another thing. And yeah, let me pick yeah. your brain on Let right. me pick your brain on this. If I got people, this is the difference right, in right. myself and then a lot of other people. If I got people coming over at 7 o'clock, like, my, my day stops at like four to get ready in preparation for the people coming over. And I noticed that I'm in the minority in this because he came out, he looked like he just got out of the shower and he, I think he just worked out. Like I'm not going to butt my workout up to the the seven o'clock start time on a party, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna start working out at five forty five. Yeah, if people are coming over at seven. Well, right? I mean, what does A Rod gotta do? Fold the napkins? I mean, well, why not work out right before everyone gets there? I got no problem with. He don't it, even know it, what's on the menu yet. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I go the opposite. A Rod works out right before I get there. That tells me he wants to clean the system before we start drinking some wine, eating some good food, and hanging. All right, go ahead. Yeah, man, I'm just not that busy that I'm that I gotta like my day is like slotted like workout five forty five to seven, get in the shower, come down yeah. fashionably late. I'm like in the shower. Early, I'm out and about. I'm greeting you at the door. Right, right. <laughs> when you, right? And I even I even said this to them. I go, man, you got like a warm-up team that comes out first. And then you guys come. I go, I'm gonna invite you over to my house and just just full disclosure, I'm coming to the door. Yeah. I got I got nobody. <laughs> I mean you're you're setting up the charcuterie play 30 minutes before the thing starts. I'm with you. All right. So oh, that's awesome. He comes in, we start chit chatting. Nice guy. We go out, we sit down on his patio, just talking about life and what have you. J Lo comes down, beautiful. I mean, she's I, just stunning. Legend. And legend. And uh, I told them, I, I pulled this move because you know we've never hung out with them before. I told them, I said, listen. I don't know you guys. I've never hung out with you in a social environment, and I've never been to your home. Man. You have to tell us when you want us to leave because we'll sleep over. <laughs> right? That's a great opening, too, by the way. I mean, is that a move that maybe should be adopted for future parties. I mean, if someone told you that, wouldn't you go, oh man, thank God. Uh, you know what? I, I, I gotta say, take it a step further, man. I like to think I'm the guy that I'm not gonna put you on the spot and make you have to tell me up front when it's time for me to go, right? What I like to think is I I I am a mind reader with that. Right when you're thinking, man, I really wish he'd make that his last beer. Oh, he <laughs> is! He is! Oh, you're leaving so soon. <laughs> oh, fuck it. I love this guy. I love that's that's me. That's I'm that guy. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know too. And I, I sh should preface it. I, I had thought that one second. I, I got uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. my father just Never text. 
Uh, yeah, and she had many, uh, she got caught without me knowing. I guess I have to drive and say that. Have I, uh, maybe, you know, I'm driving. Uh, okay, cool. And, you know, at this point, let me sidebar this. No problem. At yeah, this point, up? at oh. this point, hold on, in life with the parents, right? <sighs> When when you're fa- like I always call my father. He never yeah. really calls me because he's like I don't know what your schedule is. I don't know if you're busy. So if you want to talk, you call me. Same thing with my dad. He'll never call me, but he's always excited to talk to me. Yeah. So when my dad calls, yeah. And now that my parents are getting up in age, yeah. I think this I think this is the call uh-huh. that they're telling me I'm being rushed to the hospital. You know, like, uh-huh. that's where. <laughs> of course, bro. Of course. Your phone rings after three o'clock. Somebody's dead. <laughs> 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 Fucking horrible. Horrible, man. Yeah, I know. I'm right there with you. So you got, he called, you got that? We, yeah, go ahead. He called when we were on FaceTime, and I ignored it. And then a text came in. So I'm like, this is it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I was going to tell Lana, book a flight. We got to go back. So, <laughs> so he just, it's his Shit. birthday today. He just said that he was going out or whatever. So anyway, oh, oh, all right. Uh, getting back to the thing. I didn't say to them in the beginning of the night, let me know. What had happened was, and this is the difference between normal kind of, not normal, but I should say, if you're non-Italian, this is the difference. Yeah. We went from outside to inside to have the meal inside. And then after we had the meal, we moved to another location for coffee. Okay? Right. Nice. Now, yeah. Ital- Italians, we sit at one table for everything, right? For, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll have dessert in the same crumbs from like like we'll eat ice cream while looking at a piece of pasta that flew off the plate that's still on the t- <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have, you have like a, you have an apple pie and there's still a half a glass of white wine to your right, <laughs> right there with you. Yeah, like we could be eating like pistachio gelato and be looking at the bread basket <laughs> yeah. that's still on the table, right? So, Break it down, set it back up, meal by meal. Yeah, this is nice doing relocation for every. Situation. Relocation, yeah. It was drinks outside, dinner inside, and then to a nice little cozy nook for coffee. But in my head, I'm thinking, oh, all right, this is this is like we we keep moving closer to the exit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, the next, so the next move is the driveway, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when they're saying we're going to have coffee, that's clearly their way of saying, so stop drinking because you're going to be driving very soon. <laughs> so, sober up because you got about 17 minutes left here. <laughs> yeah. So as we're sitting down for coffee, that's where I said, listen, just so you know, uh, you know, let me know when you want us to leave. And J Lo's like, oh, I'll tell you. And she was very. <laughs> I'd be like, if I were her, I'd be like, well, that's what the coffee's for. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, the coffee's the, the period to the end of the <laughs> night. I mean, I can, sounds like I can fold your coat on your lap and you still go, just stay, let me know when to leave because I'll stay for a guy. I just gave you your fucking coat. Your car is running. My guy brought it around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so I, I gotta tell you it was a fun evening it was really they were gracious hosts they were really really engaging it was really nice to actually sit and you know we did the whole social distancing and what what have you but it was a great it was a great awesome. night I, I i really had a, an enjoyable experience over there and uh that's all awesome, it was man. fun it was I a bet. fun fun night <laughs>
How could it not be, man? Holy shit. Now you're getting into territory where it's a Saturday night and uh, LDC calls you up to play some paddle ball under the lights. But uh oh, A Rod J Lo call you to do a little karaoke. <laughs> Did I just give myself that echo? Yeah, anyway. That's cool. So that's that's what's going on over here. I'm sorry to monopolize the no, entire cast here. What's going on over at the Corielli residence? Hold on. <clears throat> Boom, dude. Bro, can, wait. You, can you it's see really, it? It's really it's 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 washed out. I gotta uh, oh wow, bro. Yeah. Oh, Pete and Sebastian, the cast masks. Oh, <laughs> shit, dude. Look at you. Uh, can even, you can do a slide over to put whatever face you want, dead center. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, are we selling these? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I need some, I need some available? Uh, I tell you. Yeah, you see these things. You're almost rooting for the Wuhan special. <laughs> 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 these are courtesy and i got a bunch of them i got some for you of my man bob bob seldman and it's bob at i want to read this right man bob at b hooks oh par shots inc par shots inc uh don't worry we're gonna get that in there properly bob but he's from long island look he even gave me a poker chip once with the pete and sebastian show he oh, said wow. he sent me a thermos with Jackie running in the marathon, he sent me a thermos of the whole Maniscalco family he found online. You, your two beautiful children, and your wife, all on one water bottle, man. Well, yeah, oh, so nice. I got I got to get that sent that you sent your way. Yeah. So and then somebody else sent me anonymously, dude. I don't even know who this is. Are you kidding me? Check this out. Can you see this? Oh. Bro, you got a piss can. I got a box of them. A box of three of them. They're medical piss things, so you don't got to get out of bed. They go right between the groin nice uh, with my new studio. Unless I got to take a dump, I can stay down here for I don't know, three jugs worth, bro. Oh, this is are you, fantastic. Are you going to take one of those to go in the car and just keep it in the glove compartment? Well, I... Just well, to I I, I told Jackie, this is great when I'm on the road. I, sometimes the only reason I have to stop is the pee. And she's like, you're going to piss in a jug? And, and I'm like, you know, if nobody, if you don't know, you don't know. Like, you, know, you would know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm very excited for my new studio. Uh, so, by the way, I just want to say um, the other day, Sadie's at that age now where uh, I did I did one of these, man. Um, Jackie's got the, the clothesline. She can't get the clip off and she goes how do you get it off and I go you just got to jerk it and then I go and then jerk it again tonight on the couch right and say <laughs> and, and Sadie's right with chalk on the driveway and she goes dad the clothesline can't reach the couch and I'm like yeah no I know I'm just being, daddy was being silly <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, now I, I just want to ask you one fatherly advice yeah. And this goes out for other dads out there listening who sometimes get torn, especially in the time we're living now. I want to tell you a scenario that happened yesterday that I'm feeling a little weird about. And if you think I should have maybe not said anything about it, or it is what it is. We're in, I think, phase three. So yesterday, the playgrounds officially opened up. So I take Sadie. We're going to go to a playground near us, the best one. We get there. And there's about three or four other kids there, um, one set of parents, and then most of the three of the kids, one was like, you know, whatever, but three of them, they were all like uh, playing with each other. Between you and me, I just gotta be honest, man, white, white trash, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but whatever, I'm not saying I'm judging, I'm just saying you notice yeah, things. White trash. You notice things. Yeah. So there's a boy about her age, one of them. And her and him start doing the uh, uh, monkey bars and challenging each other. Sweet kid. They play together for about 45 minutes. I'm rooting this kid on. I'm like, I'm being a nice guy. No problem with any of it. He's with like a 20-something-year-old a girl, turns out as a stepsister, right? So after 45 minutes, 
I'm getting ready to kind of go anyway. I'm done. I want to split, right? <clears throat> so the girl, the 20-something, she's like 28 or 27, she comes and she sits by me and she starts going about the kid she's with. Yeah, that's my stepbrother. I feel really bad for him. Uh, his parents are breaking up or they're divorced or something. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, that's that's definitely tough. I, t I understand, you know, it's a tough time, you know. And she goes, yeah, and he's got two sisters <laughs> and uh, they have lice. And when they come over, my mom has to spray their hair. But now what? we have... But now we have a baby, and my mom can't spray the spray because the baby might smell it, so they can't, the kids can't come over. Bro, I, I, it's like, uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show. Don't forget, don't forget to tip the wait staff. We're fucking out of here. Right? So, my daughter's dangling on monkey bars with some kid who's got two sisters that kind of get sprayed, uh, de-liced everywhere they go. I mean, so I, I, this is just what's going through my head. Any parent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I go, oh, that's terrible. Well, I hope I hope things turn around for you. You know, have a really good summer. We got we got to go now. And she's like, okay, you too. And I was like, all right. And I go, Sadie, let's go. We got to go. A little longer, Dad. I was like, nah, let's go. And she's like, a little longer. I go, say, come on, man. Really, we're going. We got to go now. It's time. So then we're leaving. And now you got to remember, this is the first time on a playground in about three months. Yeah. And it's a beautiful day. And she's like, why do we have to go? So <clears throat> I decided to, I told her the truth, you know? I said, uh, I go, listen, you know, <laughs> I was talking to the girl and she started telling me that the kid you're playing with is two sisters and they have lice and they got to be sprayed uh, and they can't even always be sprayed. It's a whole thing, say. So it's just, you know, we're better off. We had fun. We were there for 45 minutes. It's, it's just fine. And she goes... He was a nice boy. I go, he's a very nice boy, say. He, and she goes, what's lice? I'm like, well, you know, it's these bugs you get in your hair. Do, do I have lice? I'm like, you don't have lice. It's, I don't even know why I told you. I'm just saying, you know, it's just, you know, so we were there long enough. I'm not judging anybody. Everybody are good kids. It was just time to go. Fucking cut to, it's about 12.30 night. Jackie and I sleeping. You hear her crying. Never does this, right? Jackie's got to get out of bed. She goes in there. Sadie's going, I think I got lice. What the fuck? <laughs> now, do you just say it's time to go and leave it at that? Or Like, I don't want to make my kid be someone who judges. Like, and I know maybe I'm judging, but I also don't want my kid. I want my kid to be aware enough to know. Yeah, you, you hear somebody's rolling with somebody else with lice. You fucking, <laughs> you fucking get away from all those fucking people. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I think she's at the age now where she could then start to, you know, make these judgments. Where if she's in school and she knows someone's got lice, you stay away from that person, or you might not want to play for, with that person. And it's nothing against the person; it's just that yeah. you don't want to have to come home and shave your head because <laughs> some. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Bro, if, if you 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 did it light, bro, I would I would have stopped off <laughs> at CVS and, and shampooed her hair in the car. <laughs> oh shit, man. I, you know, uh, well, I tell you, it's like you said, though, I think um, I'd rather have her. I, I, I'm not saying if you ever ride a kid with lice, go, ew, you're gross. Just do a like, uh, oh, is that a blue jay? You know, <laughs> a, a slow fade, a slow fade. So we had a kid with lice. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if this is uh, just this one instant. In in grade school, I remember right. a kid. You remember, you remember. Look how much shit you forgot, and you remember this one fucking kid this one time. <laughs> but <laughs> at the time when they when they mentioned who had lice, because what happens yeah. when, when the with the lice check, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It, remember. And I don't know how you guys did it. You went down to like the gymnasium or the lunchroom. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you yeah. had all the nurses with plastic gloves. But well, you also got the old scoliosis run <laughs> where they run their fingers down your fucking spine, let you know if you're going to need crutches. Oh, shit. That's a play. But yeah, I'm with you. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so you went down to, to the lunchroom, and then you came back to class. Now, there was always one kid missing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, yeah. We'll give you a hint. He didn't get a phone call either, right? <laughs> Fucking. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you, you kind of put two and two together. They didn't tell you <laughs> who, who has it, but you're like, where's Eugene? You know, like, you, you know, Eugene's yeah. got. Lice right. now. Yeah, and Eugene comes to school two days later. He looks like he enlisted in the fucking Marines. <laughs> so, but in my yeah. experience with lice, and this is my experience, it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. When they told you who had lice, right? In your head, you're like. Yeah, <laughs> like we knew that before the check, you know. Like, yeah. It was always it was always the kid that you would expect would have it. No, absolutely. It would be the one you guessed. It'd be the one you guessed. You never. It's never like the really clean cut girl or boy, you know. <laughs> that's always well dressed and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always the kid who looks like he was sleeping in a pig pen. Yeah, listen, nobody got crabs from a clean carpet, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the same shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, while we're talking about animals, by the way, the other thing I wanted to say uh, didn't work, but got to give me credit for this. Remember them old smoke bombs we'd have growing up where you light them and then they'd They'd eventually smoke a different color, like really. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So Walmart's yeah. been selling those things again, right? So I go in and I buy like five packs of them, eight in a pack or something like that. And I got these little gopher holes all over my front yard. Little chipmunk, chipmunks. I see them fucking run down there, you know? Yeah. So I fuse like five and six of them together. I got Sadie with me. And I take a pipe and I fucking stuff them down the hole. And I have a piece of cardboard with her. And I go, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to light the smoke bombs. Once it starts smoking, you step on the hole with the cardboard. And you got to keep your foot there. If you feel something hitting the cardboard, that, oh, that's a fucking chipmunk trying to get out. Then you let it out. Then you let it out. But don't move that carpet unless you feel something trying to get the fuck out. Like, I don't want to do this, Dad. I go, I can't lay it and stand on the trap door at the same time. <laughs> this poor kid. <laughs> Oh, we came up empty, but shit, it was worth a try. <laughs> oh, God. So, hey, hey look smoke, at that. Smoking chipmunks out of their holes. You got to go back to work, bro. <laughs> bro, bro what's it? Work? Are you kidding me, man? They're tearing down. But now, you know, that you see that, like, Thomas Jefferson statues are going down. Anyone, you know, who ever had slaves back in that time. What's, yeah. gonna, what's getting interesting is they're going to get rid of all our money, bro, because all those people were, were slave plantation owners. So oh, now the, they, money's, the money's going too now? Yes, and now they're saying, do we even need money because we're all going to be sharing? But, <laughs> but if we are going to have money, they want to redo the money. I made all that up. That's not even true, but it's going to fucking happen. <laughs> That's how fucking crazy this world is. You believed me. You were going to Google that shit after the show. I was. I, I swear to God, I thought uh, I thought they were going to get rid of the $10 bill. Yeah, well, listen, by the way, if they do redo the money, you got to throw a few white people on there just to balance it out, right? So I'm, <laughs> I, I'm thinking Watt's got a good chance of getting on the 10 A good chance. Oprah's going to be on the $1 bill. That's a given. That's a given. Yeah, they're no, they're I, already I, I, minting those. <laughs> I, think, I think Oprah on the 1 and... <laughs> You know, if if I'd have to take a, a an African American male, ah, ah, there's so many to choose from. Jackie Robinson I, on the twenty, and then maybe put Denzel on the fifty. You know, a little. That's pop what I was culture. gonna say. I was gonna say Denzel on the hundred, because he just he just he exudes the hundred. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, God, can you imagine being on money? That's that's if I, if I, if you were on money, has anyone ever been on money while they were alive? <laughs> yeah, that, you imagine giving you a 
self to pay for a lawnmower? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at the guy going, can you break a me? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, my God. Oh, 171 on the fucking thing. Is unbelievable. Hey, they didn't hear yet about the evening at A-Rod and J-Lo's. They're not even married there. Dude. No, that's going to be a great wedding, bro. Well, you got to cast from the wedding. You're going to have to cast oh, from the wedding. Oh, man. I don't even know if I'm invited. Great hanging. I needed this, man. Oh, God. It was good to throw all this up. Uh, thanks for the listenership, everybody. The Pete and Sebastian Show. Get this thing around. We've been doing it for seven years now. And every time we get on this thing, we always have a ball. And I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I have an announcement. June 28th, I'm doing another virtual dinner called Sebastian's Sunday Supper. We're doing it with Chef Dominic Di Bartolomeo. You're going to get a box of uh, wonderful Italian food, uh, food uh, curated by Dom. We're going to get back up on Zoom. We're going to have some special guests, some contests, some giveaways. Uh, and it's going to be another fun evening. The uh, We partnered up with Good Plus Foundation again, as well as the Comedy Store Benefit, which is giving money to the employees at the Comedy Store where I started So uh, because they haven't been working in over three months and they that's need awesome. some money. So that's uh, at SebastianSundaySupper.com. Awesome. Get your tickets before June 24th. Now, a, a question with that. That's so obviously it's like last time where the food is only going to be delivered locally because it's a local thing. Nationwide this time. Wow. We've opened it up nationwide. Everybody in the uh, continental United States is eligible to get a box. It will be delivered to your door. The box is not just an Amazon box. This is a box designed by my wife, Lana Gomez. Wow. And uh, it's going to be a, a, a fun night. Uh, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern. And we're going to have a ball. Um, and that's it. I have a massage I got to go to. All so right. I Good. will talk to you soon. Good hanging. Good hang.